Every breath you take, every move you make, every bond you break, I'll be watching you. During the last 10 years, closed-circuit television cameras, CCTV, has become integrated in cities all over England. We find them on the high street, shopping centres, the bank, the post office, airports, public transport, universities, schools, offices, cinemas, restaurants, stadiums, housing estates and even public toilets. Millions of pounds is being spent every year on CCTV systems and other surveillance equipment. Every move we make from the time we leave our home in the morning until we come home in the evening is likely to be caught by some kind of surveillance camera. With more and more surveillance cameras being put up every year, one can't stop thinking, are we heading towards the big brother society George Orwell described in his book 1984? In this piece we'll be looking at the different areas CCTV is being used and why it's being used, and also looking at the effects CCTV has had and what it might have in the future. The main purpose for the cameras is to provide a deterrent process rather than be used to, to, to apprehend individuals. Uh, the idea being that the cameras provide a deterrent to anybody who, who wishes to carry out any uh, improper activity. I think that most people nowadays are more concerned about uh, safeguarding their rights as individuals to uh, walk about a city centre uh, in peace and safety. Since the arrival of the VCR in the 1960s, video surveillance has become more common and more readily accepted. The first CCTV cameras were introduced in the USA in 1967 and it was called Photoscan. The rise of CCTV can be explained by the rise in criminality. In 1979 there were three million crimes reported in Britain. In 1992 this figure had risen to six million. Well, the, it was crime on the campus, uh, the fear of crime perhaps more important than the crime itself. People needed the reassurance. There's also a safety issue. Uh, people need to feel safer and my staff need to be supported and the camera, the camera is an ideal medium for that. Circa 200, 250,000 pound a year is a, is a reasonable figure to be looking at for a system of, of, of this size and nature. Um, obviously that's going to vary because as we bring, bring on more cameras the cost is going to increase and there are plans to bring on more cameras as well within the next year or so. Thanks to new technology CCTV cameras have improved from just being able to record a static black and white picture it wasn't very clear they're now recording colour images in some systems they're being monitored 24 hours a day seven days a week and operators have the possibility to zoom, pan and tilt they have the power to follow anyone around for hours. In Manchester, operators once followed a suspected shoplifter around for two hours. Once it was evident that the suspect was indeed a shoplifter, the police were contacted and arrest was made. We don't want people to think that this is a covert operation. The cameras are highly visible on the streets and we want people to know where they are. One, so that they can feel reassured when visiting the city centre of Manchester, but two, so that they know actually they've got to behave themselves. Um, so, no, we're very, very keen that the message should get out about, uh, about the camera locations uh, and exactly where the cameras are. Passengers and customers to the Metrolink system are aware that CCTV is in operation. Um, we comply with the Data Protection Act by installing sufficient signage at each station and stop to advise passengers that um, images are being recorded. We don't hide the fact that we have the cameras. And in fact, um, you know, we, we would more than hide them, publicise the fact that we do have them. People like to feel secure in the knowledge that, you know, this security is taking place. But is the public aware of the amount of cameras, where they are and what they can do? I've never really thought about it. Um, most of the time, I should think, they, they seem to be sort of everywhere, really. No, no idea, no. Uh, all the time, I would think probably up to, I guess, 25, 35 times an hour. But not only that, of course, on the roads now, with all the traffic masters set up, um, car number plates are being clocked everywhere, 
everywhere you drive, your the optical character recognition software now is picking up your car number plate. So I guess the days of being free to go wherever you want to go are long gone anyway. There are two questions to be asked though. One, how effective are they? And two, is there a possibility that crime displaces and just moves to another place? I think that there is uh, conflicting research on how good the cameras are. I think that um, in terms of their effectiveness in tackling crime, some Home Office research has suggested that they have a positive impact, a quite significant impact on cutting crime where they're sighted, particularly in the first few months they're there, although it may then creep back. Um, it's not clear how much they actually prevent crime and how much they just help that crime be shifted, if you like, to, an, to the next neighbourhood that doesn't actually have CCTV yet. Um, incidentally, in terms of the actual camera's effectiveness, that's now an issue that's being highlighted. I believe the police are calling for people to make sure their cameras work properly because uh, the BBC security camera's footage uh, of the recent bomb turned out to be less than useful because the uh, film was very poor quality. You need men to respond because cameras by themselves do nothing. If people come along with ski masks on and there's no guards, they're going to commit a crime and get away with it. And this is a fault that many establishments make. They put cameras in, they put a VCR and then they come the following morning find there's been a burglary. Another issue to be raised is whether or not security cameras invade on people's privacy. This could be the case when cameras are situated in residential areas. CCTV has always been seen as a magic bullet to fight crime, so the development of these has been fairly unregulated. Oh, the controls are definitely not strict enough, not clear enough. Um, what people are gathering is an awful lot of information on people. It's very important that that information is properly controlled and not misused. However, the Data Protection Act provides some regulation. For example, the public have a right to demand a copy of a tape if their image has been recorded. The way footage is being handled, stored and processed is also restricted to a certain limit and the controllers have a code of practice to follow. All of the video footage is very carefully uh, um, um, I've taken account of. It's all stored. We retain tapes for a year um, here within this building. Anything that is um, taken out for evidential purposes by the police is uh, signed for uh, and we know exactly where all the videos are at any particular point in time. So it's all very, very carefully controlled. It's more about it's the unregulated proliferation of these cameras and concerns that they may be being used where they're not really needed and what they're then used for. You mentioned television. Um, we do have a problem, for example, with CCTV cameras that are there for the protection of the public, for our safety against crime, then having footage from them used on effectively television entertainment programs. That's uh, kind of an invasion of your privacy. Um, is that really what you would you really want to see yourself on one of those shows just because you fell over in a store? So, with more and more cameras popping up, where are we heading? How can we be sure that our right to privacy is being kept safe in the future? We kind of worry that, that we may only see more regulation when there have been enough cases of abuse of CCTV that there's a public outcry. It would be nice if we could get more regulation before that happens and before people have to suffer that kind of intrusion. Um, I think in, pub, in open space there is uh, certainly a move from the, the police and from the government to provide um, funding for and support for uh, increased coverage of public and open space. There's a case that we're currently taking through the European courts where uh, a gentleman who'd reached basically the depth of despair and decided to commit suicide. His uh, attempted suicide was caught on film by a council's CCTV cameras. They passed that footage to a television station and it was broadcast as part of a programme trailer. Now that's clearly a, a hopelessly unacceptable intrusion into someone's privacy at a time when they're incredibly vulnerable. Imagine for a moment that you are that person or a relative and that you turn on the television and find that being broadcast. They had no forewarning of it. Um, it uh, defies description, it's almost unimaginable.